Hey guys, last week I talked about the nine criteria in the DSM that are listed as the symptoms of a depressive disorder or a major depressive episode. This week I wanted to talk about four things that may be covert symptoms that you are dealing with some type of a depressive episode in your life. And so I'm going to list them off and talk a little bit about each one and how this might be an indicator of depression in your own life or in the life of someone around you. So number one symptom that can quite often be linked to depression but is not listed as a clinical symptom is if you notice that you have become more irritable and angry or that someone around you is more irritable and angry. This might mean that you're impatient, you're really critical of people around you. This could be someone at work or, or if your teenager or child suddenly starts reacting really aggressively to things that you're asking them to do or calling people names. People who are dealing with this irritability connected with depression will often lash out at their loved ones. And then these episodes of anger will quite often be accompanied by tears or sadness. So what anger means and why it is linked to depression is that anger doesn't necessarily mean that someone is actually mad at you. What is going on here is that someone feels threatened, their self-esteem is not good at this moment in time, or maybe they are just hurting. Things that you're saying are hurting them more. And the reaction to this because of many people not being self-aware when we feel hurt or have had are having an episode of depression is that we lash out with anger. Number two symptom that is not listed as a clinical criteria of major depression or major depressive disorder, but it is rumination and fixation on things. So this is when you or someone around you begins to worry excessively about situations that for most people would seem like just a regular everyday occurrence. Maybe they did or said something at work and they just cannot stop thinking about it and beating themselves up constantly thinking that they're such an idiot and really having this negative self-talk. What negative self-talk does over time is absolutely crushes and destroys the self-esteem and leads to more of this rumination and fixation. This can lead to people losing sleep, using so much energy up on this rumination and fixation that they're just feeling constantly fatigued and it actually makes the symptoms of depression worse. It also affects people's ability to make clear and easy decisions and takes away their energy from doing the things that they enjoy and like to do in their spare time. When we're ruminating and obsessing, it's a little bit like if we leave things till the last minute in university and we're up till 3 a.m. working on a paper. And we have no choice but to do it right now. That's how people with rumination and fixation feel. Um, they will stay up late into the night or wake up really early in the morning to think more about things and obsess about them when someone who isn't really dealing with depressive disorder or low self-esteem would not worry about it and they would come up with a plan to do this at a more convenient time. I've talked about symptoms of anxiety in the body but body aches and pains or pain in the body is quite often also connected with depression and depressive disorders reason for this is that we have neurotransmitters and biological pathways in our bodies that are affected in the same way in our brain when we feel emotional pain and we feel physical pain. So there's evidence and studies to show that people with depression are more likely to develop issues with chronic pain. And there are thoughts that this can be to do with chronic inflammation due to the constant stress that people feel when they have depression and they're in an elevated stress response. So if you are feeling aches and pains in your body and you are depressed, you're not imagining it. There probably is a connection there. And when, like I say, when we feel emotional pain, we also feel physical pain. It's like if you can ever think back to a time when you've just felt almost like heartbroken or you've felt loss through grief or, or whatever it may be loss of a relationship, loss of a person. 
those pains inside your body that you feel are a result of emotional pain. So like I know if I have lost someone through through death or through a horrible experience or even like the end of a relationship, I will feel like unquenchable pain in my stomach and in my gut. And I find that it affects everything from my digestion to um, just how I'm feeling in terms of having energy levels. So these are really concretely linked. And I think that we don't always realize the brain body connection between depression and chronic pain. Number four is if your habits are changing. So if you notice someone around you has taken on a completely different eating schedule or they've suddenly just stopped going to the gym, they used to go every day and they don't go anymore. Um, if they used to talk really positively about something in their life and now they don't talk about it at all or they only talk about it negatively. If you notice that someone is has started drinking or using drugs, keeping really strange hours in the night, these all might be signs of depression that are covert, that are not clinically listed, but that are still, in my opinion, things we need to watch out for. So depression is a vast and complicated topic, but I just wanted to give you some insight into how depression may look in your life. And if you need the clinical criteria for depression, don't hesitate to go to my video from last week and look at those nine criteria as well. Please don't be afraid to reach out for help if you are struggling or if you know someone who is struggling. And don't hesitate to check out my links below for free therapy tools on improving depression, improving anxiety, and generally feeling better about ourselves. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next week.